Hello, good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer. Uh, I'm Melinda St. Clair, the rector of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Billings, Montana, and I'm coming to you uh, as part of that community uh, from my home. Uh, today is the third Sunday of Advent, um, also known as Gaudete Sunday, and it's a Sunday when pink is the color of the day. We have a pink candle, which will light today. I don't have pink vestments, so I'm wearing uh, Marian blue today. Uh, but uh, we will observe uh, this little brief reprieve in the middle of, of a season that can be kind of tough. So anyway, um, we're also, when I light the wreath, going to sing the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Some of you maybe have uh, that, but you know the words, most of you. If not, you'll catch on. Uh, we'll be using the readings for the third Sunday of Advent, if you have your leaflet. So morning prayer today begins on page 75. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Morning prayer begins, or I mean, excuse me, we already began. Uh, please, uh, we will continue on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord, for God made it. The earth is the Lord's, for God made it. Come, let us adore God. Please turn to page 82 in your prayer book, page 82. And let us say together the Jubilate. And because this is a day of rejoicing on our Gaudete Sunday, I invite you to say it with great rejoicing gusto, the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands, Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm uh, appointed for this third Sunday of Advent 
is Psalm 126. If you don't have a leaflet and you're using your prayer book, you can find that on page 782. Page 782, join me in saying Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, third Isaiah to be more specific, and uh, it is chapter 61, verses 1 through 4, and then skipping ahead to verse 8. So a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On page 87, I know we did this one just recently, but it's very suitable for today. Please say with me the third song of Isaiah, canticle number 11, on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, my fingers don't want to work. There we go. Our second reading today is from Paul's first letter to the Christians in Thessalonica. Chapter 5, beginning with verse 16, a reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second uh, canticle today, please turn to page 95. And we will say together, Canticle number 21, the Te Deum Laudamus, or the You Are God. And it's a page turner. So beginning on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man, you set us free, and you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. <clears throat> the third reading today is from the Gospel according to John. Chapter 1, beginning with verse 6 through 8, and then skipping ahead to 19. A reading from the Gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to, Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the one of the, the I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. 
This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the, the a midpoint, it's a little past the midpoint of Advent, a day to take a breather and, and relax a little bit in the liturgical sense. Um, Advent is often, uh, the color is purple, um, thinking it a penitential uh, season in order to get ready for the second coming, for the coming of the King of Glory. And purple represents that royal color in addition to a little bit more penitential, not as penitential as Lent, uh, where purple definitely is the color, but certainly a time of preparation. It's also a time of anticipation. We anticipation anticipate the Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And so another appropriate color during the season of Advent is blue. Today I'm wearing Marian blue, as I said in the beginning. Either color is, is appropriate because both, both uh, represent being prepared for the coming of the baby Jesus, anticipating that, that most holy night uh, when God became a human being, but also the coming again as the king of all, all the universe, when everything will be transformed into the original version that God has for us, which is paradise. And uh, so that's, we're kind of, ah, uh, taking a breather from all that getting ready and all that preparation. But nonetheless, even this day of, of kind of breathing a sigh, and it's a time of waiting, anticipating, it's still time to prepare. Resting can be a time to prepare. And I think it's important to think about what it is that we're preparing for. And I want to start with the first uh, words in our reading from Isaiah today. When he says the spirit, the writer says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those in Zion to give them garland instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. That's what Elijah was anointed to do, to tell people what God really wants for captives to be set free, whether that's physically or a captives to sin, captives to horrible circumstances, captain, captive to just the basic situations of life, and that we can proclaim the freedom that God brings us in Christ, and to bind up the brokenhearted, take care of each other, help each other through the hard times, whether it's personal or as the whole community or the whole world, which we're all going through all of those right now. Each one of our personal struggles is being lived out over and over again through the world right now, especially in a, this dark time of pandemic. But nonetheless, that light shines in the darkness. And so we can proclaim liberty. We can proclaim release. We can say, you're free to, to, to be healed. And you know what? I believe through virtue of our baptism and the anointing of chrism, which is blessed by the bishop to say, we mark you at sealed and marked as Christ over forever. You're anointed just like Elijah to bring this good news. Jesus is the one that anoints us to do that. And we hear in Thessalonians to say that Paul's saying, look, no matter what the circumstances, rejoice, rejoice. We can because of the good news in Christ. We can say that this is not all there is, that the light has come into the world and it won't be quenched even by the darkness of whatever, whether it's a virus or political strife or uh, uh, 
just bone crushing poverty, the haves and the have nights and the chasm in between, there's darkness in our world for sure. But the true light, John the Baptist tells us, has come into the world. And that's why we rejoice. And that's why, just like the Thessalonians, even in circumstances that are out of our control and that are hard to bear, it's, it's time to rejoice and give thanks that God in Christ is here. So don't quench that spirit in you. Let that spirit of freedom and healing and rejoicing well up in you and say it out loud say it to each other we're meant to tell each other out loud the good news and there are so many people in this world right now that need to hear it and so if you know it you hear it you experience it it's incumbent upon you to spread that good news we were talking in uh in uh coffee talk this morning uh, and by the way uh those of you who don't regularly come to Coffee Talk, you missed out because our Bishop Marty joined us today and it was quite a blessing. So you never know what's going to happen. Nine o'clock on the Zoom, you get an invitation. But that being aside, we talked about how it is our responsibility as Christians to kind of spread the seeds of the gospel of Christ as we go through our daily lives to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim that we are free at least from the bondage of sin, if not free to move about the community like we are used to in this time of physical distancing. John the Baptist came and he said, look, I'm not the one. I'm not, so I don't need to be the one. And you know what? You don't, I don't, we don't need to be Jesus. We don't need to be the Messiah. John wasn't, and he knew it. He knew who he was, and he knew who he was not. We are not God, but we are there to prepare the way for Christ to break forth into the world. Through us, that's how Christ is manifest, you know, in the world that needs healing and, and helping and feeding and repenting. People need to hear the truth about God, how merciful God is, how much God loves us and cares for us even in these dark times. That can well up in us, like uh, don't quench the spirit. John the Baptist, even in his hard times, his life wasn't easy, but he said, look, I'm not the Messiah, but the Messiah is coming. The true light is coming into the world and that's a fabulous thing and I'm here to tell you about it and to tell you you need to get ready. And so in this season of Advent, which is about anticipation and preparation, a time of waiting and uncertainty, knowing that going through birth can is a painful process, but at the end you get to have the baby Jesus. So we're still on that journey with Mary, who I think a couple weeks before she has the baby, needed to sit down and put her swollen feet up and breathe a sigh and trust that God knows what God is doing, that all shall be well. And we can do that to do. We can do that too today. That's what we can rejoice in, that all shall be well, even if it isn't right at this moment. And maybe for some of you it is, and I hope so, and I rejoice in that. And I rejoice that we're never left to just wallow in the darkness because of what everybody did to birth God into humanity. Amen. With that hope and that rejoicing, let's proclaim the Apostles' Creed today on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today I, I ask you to join me in Suffrages A on page 97. I will say the verse and you will say the response, uh, but I'm going to say the response with you, so if you want to say the verse too, that's okay. And um, if you're there with someone, maybe you want to alternate verse and response. However the Spirit moves you uh, will be pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be made known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We will continue with various other prayers, the collects, which are the collected prayers of the people, uh, and some various other prayers. Uh, we begin with the Collect of the Day, which is uh, on your leaflet, if you have one of those. And then I will announce the page numbers and the titles. So if you'd like to say the prayers with me, I invite you to do that. Uh, if you choose to just close your eyes and quietly pray in your heart, that's perfectly appropriate as well. So let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, with the great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. On the bottom of page 98, a collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On page 100, a collect for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may we remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the bottom of page 100, God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth. You sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those to, who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh. And hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 4. They're found on page 388 in your prayer book. But you don't need your prayer book for this. Uh, if you choose not to or you don't have a prayer book, if you choose not to use it, uh, I will end each petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, and you will respond with, Hear our prayer. 
Let us pray then for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially our brothers and sisters at St. Stephen's, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you, O God, those on our parish prayer list, including Alice, Marlis, Carrie, Jean, Larry, Victoria, Cassandra, Kay, Jerry, Virginia, Lisa, Bob, Carolyn, Ken, Janie, Gail, Rose, Sandra, and any others you care to name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Francis Klinkosh Ligurski, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for men and women serving in our military and other dangerous professions, especially those known to us, including Chad, Chris, Jason, Jeremy, Kendall, Levi, Michael, Stephanie, Vandy, and any others you care to name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for the Church of Ceylon, the Right Reverend Deloraj Ranjit Kanagasabe, Bishop of Colombo, and the Right Reverend Kirth Isiri Fernando, Bishop of Kuru Nagala. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for the Church of the Incarnation in Great Falls, Tim Jungren, Lector, Rector. In the parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for our Eucharistic visitors and for Rose Lockram, Carmen Lolly, Ted and Beth Slavik, and John McCartney. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will continue on page 815 in your prayer book, page 815, a prayer for the human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races will serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
page 816 at the bottom for the mission of the church. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to Christ, that all may know the power of God's forgiveness and the hope of Christ's resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On page 821, at the very top, for Congress and our state legislature. O God, the fountain of wisdom, whose will is good and gracious, and whose law is truth, we beseech thee so to guide and bless our senators and representatives in Congress assembled, and the legislature in Montana, that they may enact and uphold such laws as shall please thee to the glory of thy name and the welfare of this people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On page 827, at the top, 827, for the right use of God's gifts. Almighty God, whose loving hand hath given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor thee with our substance, and remembering the, the account which we may one, must one day give, be faithful stewards of thy bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 831, for the victims of addiction. <clears throat> o blessed Lord, you ministered to all who came to you. Look with compassion upon all who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fears that beset them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery, and to those who care for them, give patient understanding and persevering love. Amen. Finally, on the top of page 834, page 834, a prayer for the answering of prayer. Almighty God, who hast promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy Son's name. We beseech thee mercifully to incline thy ear to us, who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee. Grant that those things which we have faithfully asked according to thy will may effectually be obtained, and to the relief of our necessity, and to the setting forth of thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please turn back to, I lost my bookmark, page 101. Please turn to page 101 and join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. On page 102, let's pray in the words of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, 
you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the peace and joy of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That concludes our service of morning prayer. Uh, stick around for a moment. I'll fill you in on a couple things. Um, we, uh, Father Stephen from St. Stephen's across town uh, is and I are putting together with some other people um, a service of Advent lessons and carols, which we will pre-record and uh, we will have singing. Uh, we And so you can uh, Pull it up either on Facebook or YouTube or our secretary will send out a link so you can watch online um, the service of lessons and carols and uh, we will email ahead of time a full bulletin to those of you who are on our email list if you're not already then uh, make sure you send an email to our uh, secretary uh, her email is secretary at st. Luke's .org. all run together st. Luke's Billings .org. And uh, we will send you the bulletin and so you can sing along at home. You can gather your family around or uh, watch with friends, but um, uh, we will have that service. It will go online early next week. Uh, we are also, I also want to let you know that uh, we will be having, weather permitting, um, a drive-in Eucharist in the parking lot of St. Luke's. Um, unless it's raining or really blizzarding. I don't mind a little bit of light snowfall, but uh, people will stay in your cars. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to have a radio transmitter that um, we're borrowing uh, in order to, uh, so that you can listen to the service over your radio. You won't have to just live stream it on your phone or something, uh, I hope. Or if that fails, we will have the big speaker in the parking lot. We do plan to also live stream on Facebook and it, the service will be posted also on Facebook and YouTube later as usual. Um, but uh, you will come, we will share uh, the host, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ. We're still not using the common cup, um, but uh, we will do it like we've done in in-person worship. You will get your host in your little uh, envelope, and um, then uh, that's at 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve. It'll be dark, but it'll still be early enough. So come to the parking lot. You may have to roll your windows down, so dress warm, and we will... Uh, weather permitting, have a Eucharist outside. Um, and then uh, for those of you, if you let me know ahead of time, you send me a text or you send me an email um, for the members of St. Luke's, if uh, you would like me to bring you communion uh, at your doorstep, the host, on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day, I will drive around and do that. You just have to let me know. Um, so please do come on Christmas Eve. Do watch us. Uh, on Christmas Eve uh, if you can't come in person and let me know if if I am at all possible that's also weather permitting I do have a good four-wheel drive though so um, let me know if you would like me to bring communion to you on Christmas Eve or we may have some of the Eucharistic visitors who want to do that we'll see what happens so stay tuned for Advent lessons and carols stay tuned for a uh, in person on Christmas Eve but we're not there yet we have one more Sunday of Advent and time to prepare so Take a breather today and then get busy preparing for the coming of the Lord and sprinkling those seeds of the good news wherever you go or whoever you talk to on the phone. Please stay safe. Uh, do your good COVID behavior uh, because I want to see all of you in person sooner rather than later. And so God bless you. Uh,